Good morning, everyone. It's good to be able to get together and uh, study again from the book of Psalms. Today's study is going to be coming from Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Uh, I, I appreciate it. This is one of the Psalms that I was asked to give. In fact, I had two different people ask me to do this Psalm. And uh, so, obviously, this is what we need to cover. If there's two people that are wanting it. Um, no, uh, but it is. It, this Psalm is one that we can all relate to. Okay, we, we all know that uh, at some point in time, we have probably felt the way that the psalmist feels within this within this psalm. And uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean when I when I read it here in a few moments. We're going to read through it like we normally do. I do want to point out one thing before we start reading. If you look at the very beginning, just before verse one, uh, if your Bible, your Bible should have. Uh, who has written this, a psalm of Asaph. Uh, who this Asaph is, there's a little bit of a little bit of discussion on. It may not be a person. It may be people who are of a certain uh, group within the Levitical priesthood. There was a Levitical priest during the time of David whose name was Asaph. So I, I tend to lean towards that idea. You can read about him in 1 Chronicles chapter 6. Verse 39. Uh, again, I want to point out, it doesn't matter who it is. Uh, God is, the, is the, uh, the ultimate author of this psalm. But what is said in this psalm is an inspired truth about the way a certain man felt in, uh, in his relationship at, at a particular time, or maybe certain different times of his relationship with God. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and read the sto the account. Uh, morning, Dan. Good to have you with us. Uh, let's go ahead and Albert? read. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just before we get started, I need to let Bob know that for some reason he is muted. He needs to turn his microphone back on before he makes a comment. Okay. All right. Good deal. We got you on mute for the moment for some reason. Okay, yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you want to make a comment, um, go ahead and turn your mic on. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and uh, read uh, Psalm seventy-three. Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. Ah. Um, but as for me, my feet came close to stumbling; my steps had almost slipped, for I was envious of the arrogant, as I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no pains in their death, and their body is fat. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued with mankind. I'm sorry, plagued like, <laughs> plagued with mankind, plagued like mankind. Verse 6, therefore pride is their necklace. The garment of violence covers them. Their eyes is bold, their eye bulges from fatness. The imagination of their heart run riot. They mock and, and wickedly speak of oppression. They speak from on high. They have set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue parades through the earth. Therefore his people return to this place, and waters of abundance are drunk by them. They say, How does God know? And is there knowledge with the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked." And always at ease, they, are, they have increased in wealth. Surely in vain I have kept my heart pure and washed my hands in innocence. For I have been stricken all day long and chastened every morning. If I had said I will speak thus, behold, I would have betrayed the generation of your children. When I pondered, when I pondered to understand this, I was troublesome in my sight until I came into the sanctuary of God. Then I perceived their end. Surely you set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. How they are destroyed in, in a moment. They are utterly swept away by sudden terrors. Like a dream when one awakes, O oh Lord, when aroused, you will despise their form. When my heart was embittered 
and I was pierced within, then I was senseless and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You have taken hold of my right hand. With your counsel, you guide me, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And besides you, I desire nothing on earth. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is my strength. Is the str- I'm sorry, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who are far from you will perish. You have destroyed all those who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, the nearness of God is my good. I have made the Lord God my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. Okay. As I said a few moments ago, oh, Hi, Bonnie. Good to have you here. Edie, nice to have you with us. And Aunt Mary, good deal. Oh, and Mary from from uh, India, good to have you with us as well. Um, okay, so, Albert, yes, ma'am. Your audio is cutting in and out. Um, I'm going to let people know that um, I'm going to be placing everyone but you on mute so that uh, maybe whatever's interfering may stop. Anyone that wants to interject a comment, wave at the screen, and I'll, and I'll okay. try to unmute you from here. Okay. Oh, and there's, there's Pat and Ray. You did make it home, huh? Good deal. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Make certain, those of you on Zoom, Julie's watching, watching the screens. If you have anything to mention, I guess there was some kind of uh, interference that was causing me to go in and out. Uh, so let, let's look at this psalm. Is, did you notice, by the way, did you notice things in there that you may have thought within your, in your uh, life? You know, I, I remember when I was a kid, uh, there was a song on the radio that said, only the good die young. And the idea is, you know, people who are evil, um, people who, uh, who live it up, they seem to have the fine life, but it's the righteous people that tend to have difficulties. I've, I've got a few things to say about that if I leave myself enough time when we get to the end of this lesson. Uh, some a concept that came to me about that thought um, Wait, when, when, I, uh, when I studied this before. So uh, let's look at each one of these verses. First, notice the way he starts out, verse 1, uh, and with the beginning of verse 2. Let me read verse 1 and the first half of verse 2. Surely God is good in, to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet came close to stumbling. Now, uh, one of the things to note about those words in verse 1, with that in verse 2, um, the idea of I came close to stumbling means he was on the right path at one time. In fact, continued to be on the right path, we're going to see. But there were some things that were bugging him. In other words, he had already made a commitment to God. He had already recognized his desire to be with God. And by the way, that, that makes sense. Uh, he was a Jew, uh, or, you know, the, this is the concept of someone who was a Jew. It's written to God's chosen people. They, they start out with God. Uh, you know, they're, they're born into a Jewish family, so they start out with God. So the idea of stumbling only makes sense. They were with God. But the, I love this psalm because it, it shows us the uh, the regular temptation that a righteous person, and for that matter, not just righteous people, but people who are on the fence about whether or not to follow God. They're, they're, it's the thought process that can happen to anyone when they see how good, and I'm, I'm putting those quote marks on there, and you'll see why when we get into the lesson, but how good uh, the evil people have it, and how bad good people have it. Obviously, um, it, it doesn't pay to be good. It doesn't pay to follow God. At least that's the thought that Satan wants us to have. Okay, And, and the, the psalmist really breaks that thought down very well. I can't tell you how many times I've had people say to me, why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? But what's also said a lot of times, or thought at least a lot of times, is why does God let evil continue? And for that matter, for evil to prosper. Why do evil people never get 
paid back by God. And that's one of the things that the psalmist deals with within this within this text. So let's see what it is, exactly the idea that, that the psalmist says caused his feet to almost stumble. All right. Uh, in, in fact, I love that. My feet came close to stumbling. My steps had almost slipped. All right. He's given the idea of being on a slippery slope, of being somewhere where you're ready to fall off the given way to God, maybe even fall off a cliff. But you, you, you almost give up is the idea he's speaking of here. Well, what is it that caused you to feel that way? For I was envious of the arrogant. Now notice that word. I love that way that's worded in, in the translation I have. You become to envy the arrogant. And that's really where the problem starts. When you see people who are, who are and when it uses this word arrogant, um, uh, the implication, the, the context is arrogant with God. Okay, no one's ever, <laughs> no one is ever envious of someone who is being arrogant to them. All right. In fact, quite frankly, someone being arrogant with us causes us to, to build up a wall against that person. Well, I don't want to be like you. You know, you're, you're a jerk, you know, is what will go through our minds sometimes. Acting like a jerk is something that will go through our minds. I don't want to be like you. So obviously in the context, he's not talking about I was envious of those who are arrogant against me. He's talking about I'm envious of those who are arrogant against God. All right. Um, uh I was I was enviously arrogant as I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And that's another thing that shows us he's talking about the arrogance of those who are against God, or arrogant with God. They they were continuing in wickedness. All right. Remember what the Bible tells us: the beginning of knowledge is the fear of God. All right. Uh, Proverbs chapter one verse seven. Well, these people didn't have that fear. They were arrogant against God, and they were prospering. How can that possibly be? And remember, th this was a common mindset in their day, but I want to tell you what, it's very common in ours. But they especially had this problem in their day. When they saw people that were doing good in their day, God is obviously with them. They obviously must be righteous people. When they were seeing people who had problems or were, or were not doing well financially, obviously God's paying them back for something. All right? That's a common thought in our, in our everyday, in our everyday lives. But Jesus dealt with that, okay? In, uh, what is it, John chapter 10 or John chapter 9, when, when he's dealing with the, the question the apostles ask, who sinned that this man was born blind? <clears throat> that was a common thought in the day. Well, if you had, a, if you had some, kind of, some kind of handicap, <clears throat> if, you were, if you were in a bad way, obviously God's paying you back for something, or pay, maybe in this case, their question was, who sinned that this man was born blind? Himself? Or his parents, you know, parents would be given a blind child because they sinned. It was in their mind, but that's not in God's mind whatsoever. You can go on in, in, in that in John and see exactly how Jesus covers that. And he makes it clear no one sinned. All right. Albert? Yes, Bob. Seem like these are seeds planted by Satan. Amen. Oh yeah. He, he yeah. only he only planted one little seed in the Garden of Eden, which started the whole mess. Yeah, there you go. Excellent point. Excellent point. That's exactly right. The, the psalmist, the, the writer of this psalm, if it is a man named Asaph or, or whatever, he, he, he was seeing these things. And by inspiration, he's saying, this almost caused me to stumble away from God. The fact that I, that I, the fact that I saw how people were around me, and you know what? They were, they were profiting from being wicked. Now, notice how that is. Profiting from being wicked. Remember one of the temptations of Christ? I will give you all these kingdoms if you will bow down and worship me. Uh, you will profit from being wicked if you will bow down before me. He was working on trying to get Jesus to be, to be greedy, to want to have something. And for that matter, what was God his father promising him? I'll make you king if you will suffer a horrible, terrible death on a cross, torturous death. Well, which one sounds better to you? All right, Hor horrible, torturous death on the cross, or or uh, just merely worshiping someone? That's not too painful. Um, which one sounds tempting to you? And so, yeah, yeah, very good, uh, excellent, Bob. You're absolutely right. This is this is the psalmist talking about how he was being tempted. 
the slip. Okay, verse four. For there are for there are no pains in their death. Now this is going to be the first of a of several things the psalmist is going to recognize is wrong here before the end. But do you ever get do you ever see someone who seems like nothing can go wrong for them and they're the most wicked person in the world? Well, let me in, let me let you in on a secret. Not everything goes right for them. Okay, but we. In our temp Satan especially wants us to see all the good things that are going on with them. And for that matter, the idea of only the good die young or, or, or good people are always suffering. All right. That idea that sometimes we're tempted with. That's not true either. Bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to bad people. Good things happen to good people. Good things happen to bad people. God sends the rain on the just and the unjust, Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount. All right. So this idea, this idea that, that, that bad people always have good things going for them is not accurate. The word always is not accurate. Now, having said that, God gives Satan a certain amount of ability to tempt us. All right. Let's recognize that. You, you want to see that? Look at Job chapter one and Job chapter two. And, and you can see how God will allow it. We, we oftentimes talk about that verse, and we talk about it as, a, as an encouragement, and it is. But 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, God, uh, no temptation has befallen you except what is common to man, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Stop right there. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. What is the implication of that phrase? God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted. Tempted beyond what you can bear. He knows you need patience. What's that? Yeah, he knows you need patience. That's right, Pat. That's exactly right. But He's what, going to let you endure temptation. Yeah, yeah. The, impl the, the final implication you get from that is he won't let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, Is but you are going to be tempted up to the point that you can bear. He will allow that. I mean, he will allow that. He will allow you to be tempted up, up to where you can bear. Pat's absolutely right. It builds patience within us. Exactly. That's God uses it for that. But understand something. God, God gives Satan a certain amount of leeway. He uses it for his own purposes when he allows it. But, but God, God did not tell us we're going to have a perfect life on this earth. And Satan's not going to be happy when someone leaves his dominion, which Paul the Apostle makes it clear we all did in, in, in uh, what was that, in Colossians chapter 1. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness into the glorious kingdom of his son. Something along those lines. It's around verses two, 11 and 12 of Colossians 1. Uh, but, but we were in the dominion of darkness. Well, when we leave the dominion of darkness, how happy do you think that makes Satan? Not God too. doesn't cause the, the uh, temptation, but he does control it. Yes, he doesn't cause them. We are not, God tempts no man, but he allows it. You're right, control is a... Control is, a, is, is another good word to use, but I like to, I like to be blunt. He allows it to a certain extent. No, Satan could not tempt us one iota unless God allowed it. Let's just be blunt about that. And Pat pointed out very wonderfully how God can use those temptations to make us stronger. But, mm -hmm. but, but we must have choice. God doesn't want a robot who doesn't have a chance of leaving him. He wants someone who stays with him because we love him. He wants us to have our own choice in the matter. Okay. Um, uh, so, so, so that verse four, first start of it is, is the beginning of him making points of what it looks like, but it's not really that way. And he's going to say that in a little bit. Um, uh, da, 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 da. And their body is fat. Now, for us today, we prefer not to have our bodies fat, but but understand what the point is on that. They, they, they don't starve, okay? They always have plenty to eat. In their day and time, the, the problem of being fat was only for the rich people. Um, you know, the poor people didn't have that problem, all right? There was no, there was no difficulty that you worked hard all day, they, they obviously aren't working. They, you, uh, you don't get as much food to eat. They obviously get plenty of food to eat. Okay, um, so, so with 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 good times comes 
comes body weight. And so that's, you know, the, the, the psalmist is here wishing he was fat like them. He's saying, I wish I had everything I wanted to eat and not have to work so hard. But I have to. But the, the, the evil don't. All right. Verse five. They are not in trouble as other men. Uh, no, that's not right. But that's, the, that's how he perceives it. Nor are they plagued like mankind. Uh, again, that's how he perceives it. God sends the rain on the just and the unjust. Okay. Um, therefore, pride is their necklace because they get away with things. Now, there's a certain amount of truth to that. Because they don't see the immediate ramifications of their life all the time. Because they get away with evil things. Pride is their <coughs> necklace. And the garment, the garment of violence covers them. Because they don't pay right now. And that's true. Okay, we see that in our world today. People who don't pay the ramifications of what they're doing right now. I think you probably have something running through your head like I do right now. People who don't suffer the ramifications of what they're doing right now, they do more of it. Okay, violence is there. The garment of violence covers them. They, they wear it like we, like we should wear Christ. Those of you who have been baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. We should, we should wear Christ. They wear violence. That's, that's their life. Okay. Albert? Yes, ma'am. Um, this is not about our study. I'm just letting you know that our internet is acting up. So if something happens with me, you know, or with the Zoom connection, I just want everyone to know ahead of time. Okay. Zoom, hopefully Zoom won't cut off if you go out. I don't know. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. You have Facebook. Yeah, you got Facebook. That's right. Yeah, well, I'm saying, uh, yeah, I could do... Facebook on my phone, but my Facebook on my computer is locking up. Okay. Um, All right. Good deal. Just letting you know. All right. Uh, so if anyone's asking questions and Julie's the only one who can see it, because I don't always see all the questions, please bear with us. Um, should also be checking and seeing if, yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Let's keep going. Uh, verse seven. Their eye bulges with from fatness. Same thing we saw earlier. Their imagination of their heart runs riot. All right. Uh, now, now, given given what he says in seven, he could be talking about their weight because they're they're well fed. He also could be talking about what you know the idea of of desiring with their eyes. Okay. Because that imaginations of their heart run riot. They they seek out uh, pleasure. They seek out desire. They, they have all sorts of imaginations. This is kind of like what you read. Uh, it, it can be similar to what you read in, uh, in Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19. Uh, those who, uh, the inclination, well, or, or even better, Genesis chapter 6, the inclination of their heart was evil at all times. Okay. And God speaks against the idea of, of thinking evil things or, or designing evil things in your heart. In Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19. Okay. Morning, Brent. Good to have you with us. Verse 8. They mock and wickedly speak of oppression. They speak from on high. I want to put those two together. First off, verse 8. They mock and wickedly speak of oppression. They are doing those oppressive things and they laugh about it. Have you ever seen that? I remember, I remember a long time ago. Back, back in the 90s, when there was a riot in the 90s. And two men had dragged another man out of a, out of a, a semi. Then they threw a brick at him and hit him in the head. And they stood there laughing. This is the idea that's being spoken of here. Okay? The idea, the idea they, they mock and wickedly speak of oppression. They laugh at it. That, you know... It sounds like politics today. Yeah. Both, both sides both, do yeah. that. Yeah, they'll do that. They're the pot. They'll do that, exactly, exactly. Yeah, this is not just talking about physical oppression. You know, this could be talking about, or, or, well, I guess that's still physical, but when when government oppresses you and laughs at it, they, they don't care about it, all right? Um, verse, verse and, oh, and they speak from on high, my translation has. Or you might have something along the lines of they have haughty speech, all right? They have arrogant because this is their arrogance when they speak arrogantly about about what's going on. They don't care. Proudly. Yes. Proudly. Yes, proudly. 
Yeah, they speak proudly. Exactly. Okay, that's how yours is? Yeah, right. That's the idea. Verse 10. Therefore, now look at this. Therefore, his people return to this place or come hither. Therefore, those who see them doing it, they come as well and, and take part in it. Again, when people see evil men prospering, all right, they are they themselves want to be part of what those evil people are doing and they prosper by it. Um, so uh, um, uh, the waters of abundance are drunk by them. Okay, again, they, they, they want that, they seek it out, and they drink it fully. Um, they, they get involved with it fully. All right. Verse 11, they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge with the Most High? Okay, God can't see me doing it. Or does he really know this is happening? I'm going to get away with this is the idea. God doesn't care or God doesn't see it or, or whatever. And this goes into the psalm that is Julie's favorite, Psalm 139. Where can I go from the Lord? And, uh, you, know, I, you know, you are there wherever I go. You know what's going on. All right. Well, think about it. This is the attitude someone has to have. They have to, they have to uh, uh, accomplish. They have to get to. Is to is once they realize their their deeds are sinful, once they know that those sinful deeds God doesn't approve of, they've got to either decide, well, God's not going to do anything about it, or God can't see me. Was Ten it? minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. So so this is a mockery. Is a, yeah. This is a mockery of God. Amen. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So the idea that I won't suffer punishment because God doesn't know about it, or today, today, lots of people say, well, God is love, he wouldn't do that, or, you know, or, or whatever. It's like you're, it's a mockery of what we know from God's word, that yes, God is loving, but God is also just. God is also going to do the just thing. We, we complain and wonder, why do those evil people get away with it? Well, the answer, of course, is what? They're not going to get away with it. They're not going to get away with it. Uh, you, you're saying, yeah, but they got a great life now. Uh, yeah, which one are you working for? You're working for the great life now, or you're working for the great life in eternity? Wh which one Which one is more desirable to have? Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Yeah, yeah, and not treasures on earth. Exactly, exactly. And from the Sermon on the Mount. Good point, Bob. Okay, look at verse 12. <laughs> Um, behold, these are the wicked. That kind of attitude. How does God know? And is there knowledge with him? Behold, these are the wicked and always at ease. They have increased in wealth. So once again, the psalmist is showing why he almost slipped because he was seeing that attitude and they were still getting away with it and they were still getting rich. They're prospering even with such an attitude before God. Okay, now look at what he gets ready to say. Oh, one more thing. Now, not only is he being tempted by what he sees and what he sees, he perceives they're getting away with and how there never seems to be any punishment. Whereas for him, look at verse 13. Surely in vain I have kept my heart pure my, and washed my hands of innocence. Well, the temptation is I ought to join him. Because surely I have been doing the right thing, and 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 look at what, where it's gotten me. All right. In fact, verse fourteen: For I have been stricken all day long and chastened every morning. Now, once again, just like the wicked don't always have things all the time good, people who are righteous don't always have things bad. You know, in the middle of any bad thing that I have going on in my life. You know one thing I haven't been? Blind. You know another thing I haven't been? Deaf. You know another thing I, I, I haven't I haven't received yet? Lots of people do receive, good and bad, some kind of terminal illness. You know I'm able to walk with my legs. I own a car that I can drive. I live in a house. I have a wonderful wife. You know, what what goes through our minds when bad things are happening? Focusing on the bad things. That's what he's saying right now. Focusing on the bad things. And so 
We have a song in our song books. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. No, 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 no. I'd rather, I'd rather wallow in my misery. Think about how bad I've got it. And sometimes, you know what? Sometimes it is really, really bad. It still doesn't change the fact that this phrase, I am stricken all day long and chastened every morning, isn't accurate. Wiley Coyote. Okay. Wiley Coyote? <laughs> he always had it bad. He did. You're right. He never did get the when we allow, When we allow our minds to go to the negative, that's when we get into trouble. But we're told that whatsoever things are just and honest and pure, think on these things. Exactly. We ought to dwell on the positive rather than the negative. Exactly. And once again, this is why he almost stumbled. And we're getting ready to see. Well, let's read it. Let's read it. Um if I had said, I will speak thus. Now notice what he's saying. If I had said, I will, I will speak this way, or you know, I, I would, I would act the way they are. I would change my lives. If I would have done that, behold, I would have betrayed the generation of your children. There are, you know, remember what Elijah, Elijah was told when he was in the in the cave saying, I'm the only one serving you, Lord. Remember what the Lord told him? <laughs> I've got 7,000 who haven't bowed the knee to Baal. You're not alone. Well, that's what the psalmist is saying, saying a similar thing. If I had gone that way, I would have betrayed those who weren't going that way. I would have betrayed the generation of your people. He, he was not alone, no doubt, in the temptation to leave, and a lot of other people were handling it. And by the way, he handled it as well. But the temptation of going that direction, everybody's doing it. That's one thing we always think. Uh, they are getting away with it. That's another thing we think. Um, might as well go do it because um, uh, of the way I'm always, always, always suffering. That's another way we think. And the psalmist is saying that's not the way at all. Okay. When I ponder to understand this, it was troublesome in my sight. When I tried to, when I, you know, so in other words, not wanting to, not wanting to go against the right, doing the right thing, <coughs> the psalmist, the psalmist was considering it, but he wouldn't do it because I don't want to betray God's people. And then he pondered it. It was still troublesome to him. Well, when did it get right? Look at what he says in verse 17. Until I came into the sanctuary of God, then I perceived their end. When he got closer to God, to considering God, God's word, to considering God's way, when I got closer to it, then I perceived their end, the end of those who are wicked. Now look real quickly with me on this. I know I'm getting close on time. Verse 18, surely you set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. I love that you set them on uh, uh, slippery places. That's the exact opposite of Psalm 110, 119, 105. <clears throat> thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a, and a light unto my way. Well, they don't have that word. They're in bad places. They're in slippery places and they're going to slip up. They're going to fall. Okay. Verse, uh, uh, you cast them down to destruction. Well, you know, they're their own worst enemies. They go down to destruction on their own. But God, God does not keep them, does not help them from that. Like God helps us. That how they are destroyed in a moment, they are utterly swept away by sudden terrors. This is similar to what Jesus said about when your faith is built on a rock and the storms come, the, the, you know, you can stand, your house will stand. That's, the end, that's at the end of Matthew chapter 7. But the one who doesn't do God's will, doesn't listen to Christ's words and obey them, is like one who has built his house on the sand. When the storms of life come up, <laughs> smash, okay, destroyed destruction. Verse 20, like a dream when one awakes, O Lord, when aroused, you will despise their form. God mm -hmm. will bring justice. Two minutes? Okay. God will bring justice. Real quick here. Verse 21, when my heart was embittered and I was pierced within, in other words, that envy, that looking at how they, they got away with things, then I was senseless and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. He's, he's looking at himself and said, I didn't know what I was talking about, that they were someone to be 
uh, to be envied, that they were someone that I should have been wanting to be like. I was senseless. I was like a beast. I, did, I wasn't thinking about their ultimate end. Never, nevertheless, I am continually with you. You have taken hold of my right hand. The psalmist says, I stick with God. And, and he wasn't sorry for it. You know, at the end of a person's life, which one are they going to be sorry about at the very end of their life? That I didn't commit as more wickedness than I did? Or are they going to be sorry that they committed as much as they did? What's that? Yeah. They're going to... Yeah. Um, yeah, Albert, there's, there's, there's something about the right hand I think is significant, too. Okay. It's, it's usually spoken of as being that our right hand is the most powerful. Yeah. He is saying here, as powerful as I am, I'm nothing. Yeah, yeah. The rest of this is going to the rest of this is going to go along those lines. I know I'm getting ready to lose. I'm getting ready to lose lose it lose it. The rest of it is along those lines. I want I want to finish. I want to finish with what he says at the very end. Okay, um, he says at the very end, uh, I make uh, I have made God my refuge, and I may tell of all your works. Okay, this is what's important to the psalmist. He wants to. He wants to tell God. He wants to tell people about God. Okay, we just lost Zoom, but Facebook. Let, 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 let's finish this. Let's finish this thought. Um, at, when all this is going on, he recognizes verse twenty six. He recognizes that his flesh and his heart may fail, but God is his strength of his heart and his portion forever. <clears throat> God is the only one. God is the one he has. Verse twenty five. Whom have I in heaven but you? And besides you, I desire nothing on earth. There's the focus. And that's what, that's what I wanted to end this lesson with also. We need to focus on what's important. Our focus always needs to be on eternal life. You know, one of my favorite illustrations that I like to use is an illustration. Hey, Pat, I see you came over. Good deal. Good deal. Here's an illustration I always like to use, okay? Let me do it this way. This right here, can you see it? This right here is a representation of our life, all right? That dot at the very beginning, that's right over here, that dot shows the day where we come into existence, conceived in our, in our mother's womb, and then we start, our lives begin, all right? This line right here is the day we die. See that line right there is the day we die? And that arrow shows it's going to go on forever. So our bodies will die, but our souls will go on for eternity. We'll receive new bodies that will never perish, okay? And so the problem is way too many people live for this little part right here. You know what that dash is? I like to compare that dash to the dash that goes on your tombstone, the one between the day you're born and the, one, and the, the date of your birth and the date of your death. There's the dash, okay? But this is what will happen for our soul for eternity. And that goes on forever. People, too many people live for the dash. They live for this when they should be focusing and living for this. Do, do good things happen to bad people? Yeah, they do. And for good people too, but, but bad people get all the good of getting their desires fulfilled the way they want them to fulfill today. Hey, Keith. So bad people get that too. And, and, and we are, we're not able to fulfill our desires all the time the way we want to, since many of the ways we want to is sinful. So we don't get what the evil people will get on this earth. But understand something. Their, their sin and the enjoyment of their sin is so temporary. It can only last a lifetime. That's all it can last. It can only last a lifetime. And how long will punishment last, according to God's word? And how long will the bliss of eternity with God last? Don't live for the dash. Live for the, go for the, go for the prize. Go for the long given happiness and joy and desires fulfilled. 
the desire of eternal life with God in bliss, no tears, no death, no pain. It's not true to say that, the, that evil people don't feel pain. But sometimes we think they just always have it made. But God's word, Psalm 73, makes it clear that's not true. Thank you all very much. Let's go to God in a word of prayer and we'll be closed. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. And Father, please be with us when we are tempted to think that it would be great to have everything that evil people get with their wickedness, to have everything in this life the same as them. Father, that's not great. That's only a temporary a temporary thing that is the time of our life on this earth. But Father, we know that you have better things planned for us, not only in eternity, but Father, we know you have better things planned for us on this earth. Help us to enjoy the true bliss of your way recognizing, Father, that that bliss will last for eternity. We will be forever blessed being with you in eternity one day. Help us to fight the temptation that Satan gives for us to want to chuck all that to be able to have temporary enjoyment on this earth. We love you, Father. We trust you. We give ourselves over to you. It's in your son's name we pray this prayer. Amen. Thank y'all.